All right, guys, <clears throat> today we are going to go over um, two pages in your video note sheet. We're going to go over the intro features of quadratics and then also the next learning target. Okay, so first pause the video and get down these two um, definitions of a quadratic function and a parabola. And by now, you guys already know that any function of the family y equals x squared is a quadratic. The parabola is the actual shape of that quadratic. So we've looked at parabolas that are u's and parabolas that are n's, parabolas that have roots, parabolas that don't have roots, um, parabolas that have one root where they their vertex lies on the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to dig a little deeper into those things. <clears throat> so the vertex is where the parabola changes direction. It's either the maximum or the minimum. If it's a u, or if it's an n, excuse me, it's the maximum, that's the vertex. If it's a u, it's the minimum, that's the vertex. Okay? The roots, or the zeros, are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And you guys already know this from solving. It's where we have the x-axis, okay? Or you might have a parabola that just crosses the x-axis once, and it only has one root, okay? The direction, whether it opens up or opens down, and then the scale factor is the stretch or the shrink or what it's multiplied by. So an equation, um, either in standard form or um, vertex form, A is going to be our scale factor. And if it's in factored form, um, A might be outside of these set of parentheses or it might be inside as well, okay? Um, but if it's in factor form, you can always turn it into general form to get what A is, okay? And so A takes this parent function, which we know has 1, 1, and 2, 4, um, and it either stretches it, so you, when you multiply by something greater than 1, it stretches it. When you multiply by something less than 1, it shrinks it, okay? So a stretch um, equals A is greater than 1. A shrink equals A is less than 1. And I'd maybe write that down um, if you didn't have it down from that stretching and shrinking video. All right? <clears throat> so if we are given this parabola here, and we're asked to find the vertex, the roots, the direction, and the scale factor, okay? So first, I like to find the roots. Pretty easy, right? So my roots are just where my vertex crosses the x-axis at 4 and 6. So x equals 4 and x equals 6, okay? I could either use my roots to find my vertex, or I can use the graph to find my vertex. So my vertex, I could do that in one of two ways. I could take 4 plus 6 and divide by 2, and then I get 10 divided by 2, which gives me 5. So my x vertex is 5. And then my graph looks like my y <coughs> is at negative 2. And if I plug in 5 here, that would be 2 times 25, which is 50, minus 5 times 20, which is 100, and then plus 48, okay? And that all equals negative 2, all right? So my vertex is 5, negative 2. I did that either by using my roots to find it or just using the graph, okay? And then the direction is the... Um, parabola is opening up, and we can see that, obviously, from the graph. If we were looking at an equation and only the equation, we can tell if it's opening up. If A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. So let's go back to these and make sure we know A is positive if it opens up, a is negative if it opens down. Will you add that to your notes for me? So um, it's opening up because A is positive and it is obviously opening up. And now the scale factor is a little 
different, okay? The scale factor, um, we need to compare this to our parent function. So I can't fit the whole parent function on here. I'm just going to put a couple points where I know it is. So the parent function would be at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and it looks like those are the only points we can fit, okay? Now, this is going to keep going, but I can use the ratio that I have here between points. So I have a ratio of 1 to 1 in my first movement and 2 to 4 in my second movement, okay? But if I look here at our new um, parabola, I have a movement of 1 over 1 and up 2, and it looks like over 2 and up 2, 4, 6, 8. So here where we had 1 over 1 and 2 over 4, here we're having 1 over 2 and 2 over 8, okay? Or you could write them, you could actually write them as one, ratios, 1 to 1, 2 to 4, 1 to 2, 2 to 8, okay? So what are we taking this parabola? Are we stretching it or shrinking it? Well, it looks like we're making it taller and skinnier, so we're stretching it, and a is greater than 1, so our scale factor, um, if you look here, our scale factor is doubling. Whereas we had 1 to 1, now we're 1 to 2. 2 to 4 went to 2 to 8. That's doubling. Our y values, our y changes are doubling. And we can see that very clearly. A is 2. So our scale factor is 2. Okay? So there's a couple of different ways you can find everything. You can find it from the graph or from the equation. <coughs> the roots I found from the graph, but I could have easily found from the equation had I factored, turned this equation into 2 times x squared minus 10x plus 24, and then factored this and gotten 6 and 4, or, or negative 6 and um, negative 4. And so, or I can use the graph. Vertex, I could use the equation and my roots, or I can use the graph direction, I can use the equation, the fact that y is, or a is positive, or I can use the graph, scale factor, I can use the graph or the equation to find both. So both the equation and the graph are very useful and connected. Before class, I want you to answer this question about the vertex of the parabola. Explain how you find it. So give me the formula and then actually find the vertex. But we're going to move on to LT8 identifying these features in different equations, okay? So we have our three forms now. So we have general form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We have vertex form, which is a equals, or y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And we have factored form, where y equals x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something, right? And then there's probably an a out in front of that. So an example. Here if we say y equals 2, let's use the one we just did, 2x squared plus 20, or I think it was minus 20, minus 20x plus 48, okay? Um, in vertex form, let's just use the same equation the whole time. In vertex form, our vertex was um, 5, negative 2. So in vertex form, this would be y equals 2 is our a, and then x minus 5 squared minus 2. And then in factored form, we would have 2 times our roots were 4 and 6, so x minus 4 times x minus 6. All right, so we have the same equation written in the three different forms, okay? And we can convert each form into another form. Vertex form is really hard to get. It's really hard to get from general to vertex or from factored to vertex. 
But vertex form, you can easily take vertex form and change it into general or change it in, and then therefore change it into factored. It's really easy to take factored form and get it to general form because here we would just FOIL and take everything times 2. Here we would FOIL this binomial, take everything times 2, and then minus 2 from the end. Okay? So then some questions, what does it tell us? General form tells us, well, A tells us the scale factor, and it tells us if it opens up or opens down. A tells us opening up or down. And then the only other thing that general form really tells us is C is the y-intercept. So C is the y-intercept. And we can't really see that on this graph because we can't see that our y-intercept would end up being 48. But that's where this parabola would cross the y-axis. Okay, So in general form, you get the scale factor, whether you open up or down. And more importantly, the biggest thing you get out of it is the y-intercept. In vertex form, you get the same thing here. You still have A. So I'm just going to copy and paste these two over. Because actually in each one, you get you have A, so you have the scale factor and whether you open up or down. So you should always have that. And then in vertex form, you also get the vertex. The vertex is going to be H comma K. Now remember, if here our vertex is a positive 5 because the formula has minus H. So vertex form tells us the vertex. And then factored form tells us the roots. Okay, Here our roots would be um, the opposite of that plus or minus. So in this case, it's 4 and 6. Okay, And you guys know how to find roots. All right. So in general form, we get the y-intercept. Vertex form, we get the vertex. Factored form, we get the roots. Okay. So for example, write this equation, or write an equation of this parabola in factored, vertex, and general form. Okay. Well, first of all, in all three, we're going to need to know a, which is the parent function, or which is the scale factor. So let's find out what a is, because we know that's incredible va valuable, incredibly valuable. So I like to just start by graphing my parent function. One goes with one, so does negative one. 2 goes with 1, 2, 3, 4, and so does negative 2. 3 goes with 9, and so does negative 3. So I have this, I have my parent function there. And remember, I have a movement of over 1, up 1 in my parent function. But here, it looks like I have a movement of over 1, up about a half. So let's confirm that with another movement. If I have a movement of 2 in my parent function, it should go over 2, up 4. If I move 2 here, I go over 2, up 2. So it looks like what we're doing with each of our movements is we're cutting the y's in half. Let's make sure with the movement of 3. 3 and 9 on this graph goes 3 and up 1, 2, 3, 4.5, which is half of 9. So it looks like our scale factor is turning out to be one half. And since the graph is opening up, it's a positive one half. Okay? Other things I know from looking at the um, graph is that my roots are <clears throat> negative five and three, and that my vertex is negative one, negative eight. And then it looks like my y-intercept, which is another valuable piece of information, is at about negative 7.5. Okay, so we'll start with those things to get our three equations. I think factored form is the easiest way to write, or easiest form to write, given the graph. So in factored form, I have my, or my scale factor, my a, and then I have the opposite of my roots. So negative 5 made something 0. Negative 5 would make 
x plus 5, 0. And 3 would make x minus 3, 0. So those two things, that's, those are my roots. Now, vertex form I can also just write using the, what I know. Okay, so vertex form, so this is factored. Vertex, I know I need my a, so 1 half, and then x minus h. Now minus a negative 1 would give me x plus 1, and that quantity is squared, and then plus k, and my k is negative 8, so that would be minus 8. Okay? And now general form is the more difficult form to actually write given the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my factored form and my vertex form and get my general form from them. So if I take and FOIL this, I'm going to have x squared. I'm going to write this one half out in front of it. x squared, and then that's first. Inside would give me plus 5x. Outside would give me minus 3x and then last would give me negative 15. Okay, so then if I distribute this one half then, I have one half x squared, and 5x minus 2x, or 3x would give me 2x, half of 2x is just 1x, and then half of 15 is negative 7.5, which, luckily, is what we estimated our y-intercept to be. So this would be general form. Now, just for good measure, let's make sure it's the same over here. This would be y equals 1 half, and then if I take an x plus 1 times x plus 1, I'm going to have x squared plus 1x plus 1x plus 2x plus 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1, and then minus 8. So now if I distribute that 1 half, I have 1 half x squared, and then I have just an x, and then I have a 0.5, and if I minus 8 from that 0.5, I get my negative 7.5. So this is my general form. All right. So I like to start with factored form. Then I can also use my graph to make vertex form. And then from either or both of those, I get my general form. So before class, would you take this equation written in vertex form and convert it to general form? Reminder, you're going to have to take x plus 3 times x plus 3. It's not, you can't just distribute the square. There's going to be a value of x in the middle. Try that out.